Hi class, this is the third and the last video for chapter 19. And here we're going to cover the cycloalkanes. So cycloalkanes are alkanes that contain a ring of carbon atoms. So the carbon atoms are bonded to one another and they form a ring. In this case here we have cyclopropane. And this is composed of three carbon atoms. And again, they form in this ring structure. And then each carbon is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Cyclobutane, that's four carbon atoms. Cyclopentane, five carbon atoms. Cyclohexane, six carbon atoms. And cycloheptane, we have seven carbon atoms. We're not going to go any further than that. It turns out that the bond angles in cyclopropane are 60 degrees and the bond angles in cyclobutane are 90 degrees. These are not close at all to the ideal bond angles of 109.5 degrees. So they're much more compressed and there's a lot more strain in the bonds. So that means that the cyclopropane and cyclobutane are less stable than other alkanes. So we're not going to be dealing with those in here. We're going to be mainly dealing with cyclopentane and cyclohexane. So five and six membered rings. They are, their bond angles are close to that of ideal. And they're very stable. They're naturally occurring. And we're going to find these five and six membered rings in a lot of biomolecules. And we'll study those, obviously, later in the course. The cyclic and acyclic alkanes have similar properties. So cyclopropane and cyclobutane are gases, and the larger cycloalkanes are liquids or solids. Cycloalkanes, just like alkanes, are nonpolar, insoluble in water, and they are flammable. Because the cycloalkanes are ring compounds, they're more rigid, and they're not as flexible as an open chain alkane. So there is no possible rotation about the carbon-carbon bonds. Let's go ahead and learn how to draw and then name the cycloalkanes. So usually with cycloalkanes we use line structures. And um, the way that we I had the structures drawn out on the previous slide, again that's going to take some time to keep drawing them that way. So what we do is use these line structures. So this one here would be the line structure for cyclopropane. And the intersections, here we have a carbon here, a carbon here, a carbon here. That's three carbons. It's cyclopropane. And each intersection corresponds to a CH2 group. So uh, on each carbon, you have two hydrogens. This here is cyclobutane. It has one, two, three, four carbon atoms. Cyclopentane, one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. Cyclohexane, one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. And here we have cycloheptane with seven carbon atoms. So let's take a look at this. So this is cyclohexane with a methyl group, okay? And we actually call this toluene. That's the common name for it. We'll get into naming in a minute. But notice the line structure. So we draw the six-member cycloalkane, the cyclohexane, and then one of the carbons here has this methyl group on it. Now, don't forget that each one of these carbons has two hydrogens bonded to it, okay? And so this means that this carbon here has a methyl group, but it also has a hydrogen here. So keep in mind that those hydrogens are there. So anyway, in this three-way intersection, as I state here, we have a CH group. So, how do we name the cycloalkanes? Well, what we do is we use the cycloalkane name as the parent. So, in this case here, we have cyclohexane. 
And if there's only one substituent on the rink, we just name it like we would uh, any alkyl substituted alkane. In this case, it's an alkyl substituted cyclohexane. We would call this compound here methyl cyclohexane. Again, when there's one substituent, we don't have to worry about numbering the carbons. If there is more than one substituent on the ring, then what we need to do is number the carbons. We start numbering at the group that has alphabetical priority and then proceed around the ring in the direction that gives the second substituent the lowest possible number. So in this case here, we have a cyclohexane and we have an ethyl group on carbon number one. So we'll make that carbon one because ethyl has alphabetical priority. Now, if I number this way, one, two, three, four, and so on, the ethyl group is on carbon one and the methyl group is on carbon three. So I would name this one ethyl, three methyl cyclohexane. Now, if I would have numbered the opposite way, so I start here again with the ethyl group, this is carbon one, two, three, four, five. Then I have an ethyl group on carbon one again, but my methyl group is on carbon five. So this would not be the correct name for the structure. One ethyl five methyl cyclohexane is wrong. So the name of the structure is one ethyl three methyl cyclohexane. Again, you want that second substituent to have the lowest possible number. So let's take a look at this one. We have three methyl groups. Let's go ahead and start numbering the carbons from one of the methyl groups. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll go ahead and number the other way as well. So I could start here at one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's take a look at this first numbering. So here we would have a methyl group on carbon one, three, and five. And then when I number counterclockwise, I have a methyl group on carbon one, three, and five. So either way. And this makes sense because this is symmetrical. So I would call this one, three, five, trimethyl cyclohexane. Okay, let's go to this one here. I have two substituents. I have a propyl group here. And it looks like this propyl group is an isopropyl group. And here I have an ethyl group. Ethyl has alphabetical priority. I'll start numbering this way. One, two, three, four, five. So if you're not sure about this, then draw the structure. So here's the carbon. And that carbon has one hydrogen and two CH3 groups. So yes. It's connected by the center carbon, so this is an isopropyl. What we have here is one ethyl, three isopropyl cyclo, and this is a five-membered ring, so this would be cyclopentane. Now, just practice naming the cycloalkanes. And what I want to do now is talk about a situation where you have these cyclohexanes, okay? And there are two different cyclohexanes for this substance here. There is what we call a cis and a trans, okay? These are actually isomers. They're called geometric isomers.
We'll talk about what that is in a minute. But here's the difference. When you have the two substituents that lie on the same side of the ring, then we would call that cis. So they're both pointing up. In this case here, where we have the substituents on opposite sides of the ring, so one is pointing up, and one is pointing down, this is the trans. So we have both cis and trans. And as I said before, this is a type of isomerism known as geometric isomerism. And the way it works is geometric isomers have the same formula and the same bonding arrangement. So the atoms are connected the same way, but the groups are oriented differently in space. So for these two here, they're geometric isomers because they have the same formula. Atoms are connected the same, but they only differ in how these substituents are arranged in space. In this case, both are on the same side of the ring, in this case on opposite sides. So in this case here, the compound is called cis-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. In this case, it's trans-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. Well, this concludes all of the material for Chapter 19. If you have any questions, please contact me, and I'll be more than happy to help you.